Hey there. So today we are going to take a look at our speciation notes, um, packet page 121, notebook page 110, and the how speciation happened notes uh, on notebook page 111. So we're going to start with our speciation notes. So again, packet page 121. So it should look like this. If you have not um, already cut these notes out and put them in your notebook, please uh, go ahead, pause this video and do that now. Okay, so when we're talking about speciation, right, we're talking about how a species is formed. So I don't know if you've ever thought about how we get a new species or we, how you um, create a new species, but that process is called speciation. So we're actually going to look at four different mechanisms of how a new species is created. And that process is called speciation. So please remember that a species is defined as organisms that can interbreed with each other and produce fertile offspring. So that's the key word here is fertile. So a species, uh, any male or female from that species that can create fertile offspring, right, that is a species. Okay, so in order to create a new species, each distinct population resulting from evolution must become isolated from the other populations. So let's take um, birds, for example, you know, we've got Darwin's finches right here. So as long as every single one of these finches, if they can interbreed, you know, if this bird mates with this bird, or if this bird mates with this one, right, as long as all of these birds can interbreed and produce fertile offspring, they are a single species. But if they become isolated from one another, then they can go through the process of speciation where they could no longer reproduce with each other. And therefore, we could say that they are now a different species. So let's take a look some, at some examples of how speciation occurs. So the first type of speciation event is called geographic isolation. So below we have an example of geographic isolation represented by a river. So if you had to um, uh, explain geographic um, isolation, right, what do you think that means, right? Reproductive isolation. So we have our main species, it gets split by a river. Um, you know, let's say there's a huge flood. Um, or maybe uh, a dam breaks, but basically they get split by a river, right? Uh, 10 years, 100 years have passed, right? They're still split by the river, but then maybe that river dries up, the species can come back together, but because they had been isolated for so long, even if a species uh, you know, from this green population met a species from the brown population down here, they would not be able to reproduce because they have been isolated for too long. So geographic isolation is when a physical barrier prevents two groups from breeding. So this can be any type of physical barrier like a river, a canyon, an ocean, a mountain, any type of geographic physical barrier. This physical barrier prevents gene flow between the two groups, causing them to become isolated reproductively. So geographic isolation. All right, the second type of isolation event that can lead to speciation is behavioral isolation. So many species of birds have elaborate mating rituals that include uh, bird calls, nest construction, and courtship displays. A researcher is comparing two populations of birds with similar morphology 
that live in similar niches. Male birds in one population build a nest before attempting to court a female, while males in the other population build the nest in cooperation with the female. Is it likely the researcher will classify these birds as the same species? So behavioral isolation occurs when populations of the same species begin to develop different behaviors that are not recognized or preferred by other members in that population. So I'm gonna go back for just a second. So let's take, uh, let's say that this is a cardinal, right? Uh, male cardinals are bright red and they have a specific call to attract a female cardinal. So if a male cardinal starts to, you know, sing his mating song, he is obviously going to attract a female cardinal. He may not attract a female swan because he is not displaying a type of behavior that the female swan is looking for. So again, behavioral isolation is when populations of the same species begin to develop different behaviors that are not recognized or preferred by other members in a population. And again, the most common example of this is mating calls, whether we're talking about the mating call um, in a bird or even a mating call um, for a specific type of mammal, um, a moose or a deer. There are different mating rituals that, or, that especially males of that population will perform in order to attract the female. So speciation can occur because different behaviors become preferred or they just no longer recognize them. Our third type of um, reproductive isolation event is mechanical isolation. So mechanical isolation can lead to speciation. So for example, a common farming practice is to breed a female horse with a male donkey. The result is a very robust uh, and strong animal that we call the mule. So we take you know, the female horse, breed it with the male donkey, and we get the mule. But mules are sterile and therefore cannot reproduce. So based on our definition of a species, are horses and donkeys member of the same species? The answer to that is no. They are isolated because of mechanical reproduction. Even though they can reproduce offspring, the mule, because the mule itself is sterile, they, uh, the, the horse and the donkey, are not the same species. Um, mechanical and reproductive isolation <clears throat> can also occur because of differences in anatomy or differences in the chromosome number of the two species. So the example with the horse and the donkey is an example of chromosome number difference. Um, essentially what happens is the mule ends up with an odd number of chromosomes. And if we remember our genetics, when we go to create our gametes, we cannot evenly divide an odd number. So mules are sterile. Uh, but other examples of mechanical or reproductive isolation would be differences in anatomy. So for example, um, a duck could not mate with um, a mourning dove because their anatomy is too different. So they are mechanically isolated. The anatomy just does not, uh, is not compatible. The fourth and final type of speciation event, <clears throat> excuse me, is called temporal isolation. So we have an image below that shows an example of two bees that feed from different sources. Why do you think this type of isolation can lead to speciation? <clears throat> 
So we've got uh, the BK over here, <clears throat> BL over here on the right. So the organisms feed from different sources. They are not likely to mate. So this is temporal isolation, um, temporal referring to the Latin word for time. So breeding occurs during different time of the day or maybe even a different time of the year. So the two groups, because they observe a different breeding time, they never get the chance to interbreed. So the species are temporally isolated. So they are they become two different species because they never again have that chance for gene flow. So over time, <clears throat> that one species of bee can become two because they become temporally isolated. Um, or for example, deer. You know, deer typically reproduce during a specific mating season, you know, when it's warm. Um, but if you have deer that live in one part of the country, you know, take North Carolina and maybe deer that live in Texas, their reproductive times may differ just a little bit based on, you know, the climate of that region. So those two deer populations, while yes, being separated geographically, might also become temporally isolated. Um, another example of temporal isolation would be with flowers. Um, flowers will typically release pollen during different points of the day in order to increase sexual reproduction so that they can reproduce, they can get more genetic variation. So that's it for our speciation notes, taking a look at the four different types of speciation events, geographic isolation behavioral isolation, mechanical isolation, and temporal isolation. So let's take a look now at our patterns of evolution notes. There are no, um, there, there are pre-printed notes, sorry. So this is packet page 118. So we're gonna start up at the top right, convergent versus divergent evolution. So convergent evolution occurs when organisms not closely related to one another independently evolve similar traits. These are called analogous structures as a result of experiencing similar environmental pressures. So we need to make sure we copy down this statement. And then just for example, um, the sugar glider and the northern flying squirrel they are not related. Um, they do not have a close common ancestor. However, they have developed similar um, similar traits, meaning you know this kind of skin flap here in order for them to glide you know from one point to another. So the short haired glider, right the sugar glider and the flying squirrel are an example of convergent evolution because they are not closely related to one another, but they did evolve similar traits. So they are not closely related to one another and they independently evolved similar traits. So convergent evolution um, of echolocation, so bats and whales, again, not closely related, um, but they developed an a similar trait of echolocation because of similar environmental pressures. The bats hunting at night, uh, blue whales, um, you know, hunting deep in the ocean, you know, there's not as much light. Um, another example of convergent evolution, the streamlined bodies of a lot of aquatic organisms, the shark, the dolphin, um, penguins, and then, of course, ichthyosaurus, um, dinosaur that has gone extinct. Now, divergent evolution occurs when organisms that are closely related split off from a common ancestor and become more and more different from one another 
due to reproductive isolation. So they started out as one species, but became isolated over time. This leads to speciation. So an example we can put in our notebook uh, could be uh, the pork fish, right? The two different types of pork fish, one found in the Atlantic Ocean, the other in the Pacific Ocean, right? They um, are divided right, by right, Panama, which kind of arose out of the ocean a few million years ago, right? They basically, they got split geographically. So they have now been isolated for so long that they have undergone speciation. Um, again, another example here, right? Starting out with a single species of fruit flies, one group being fed starch-based food, the other group being fed maltose-based food. Few generations pass because the species could not interbreed because there was no gene flow between the two groups. They have now become reproductively isolated. Um, down at the uh, bottom of our notes, the bottom right-hand corner, talking about coevolution. So coevolution occurs when two or more species influence each other's evolution, resulting in the two populations changing in response to one another. So the example here, we have a hummingbird and this flower. So the flower is developing longer and longer petals, right? So the nectar is all the way down here at the bottom. So the flower is developing longer and longer petals to keep organisms from getting to you know, that food source. So hummingbirds, right, have slowly adapted over time, right? The most, the more favorable trait of having a long beak is being selected for because the hummingbirds with the longer beaks are able to get to that food source. They survive, they have more energy, they reproduce more frequently than hummingbirds that may have a shorter beak. And so over time, we have a co-evolution between the hummingbird and its beak size and the flower and the length of the petals. Um, another example of co-evolution, um, kind of the same thing looking here, the longer, right? This is, um, I think, a moth. So the longer the tongue, right? Selection for longer tubes. So the long, the same thing we saw here with our hummingbird, developing that longer beak in order to get the nectar at the very bottom of the flower. Okay, so, um, sorry, flipped the wrong slide. So the next part of our notes for specia speciation, going back over geographic isolation again. Um, again, geographic isolation, that physical barrier preventing, right, really two or more groups from breeding. Breeding between the two groups is called gene flow. So if I cannot physically you know, go to a place to find a mate, then genes cannot flow between the two areas, right? Because, you know, for example, species here on the mainland, species here on island A, and species here on uh, island B, right, they are geographically isolated from each other. So individuals on the islands and on the mainland, they are geographically isolated from the other two. So there is no gene flow between the mainland and both islands. So over time, speciation will occur where the organisms island B will, will have certain traits versus island A versus the mainland. Um, so this is just showing the route along which the hawks were driven during a storm. So um, geographic isolation can occur because of natural events where 
uh, organisms accidentally end up in a different space. Um, so a storm, an earthquake, um, or it can happen slowly over time, like the formation of the Grand Canyon. But for either event, geographic isolation is still leading to speciation because there is no gene flow between the isolated groups. Our last example of how speciation occurs, again, going back to behavioral isolation. Again, really the females are selecting for a behavior that they prefer. So this does touch a little bit on sexual selection that we talked about back um, in our natural selection notes, where you know the male peacocks are growing these um, very large, very colorful, very dramatic tail feathers in order to attract a female. Um, so obviously, female peacocks would prefer this behavior or this uh, mating display, and other birds like I don't know a swan or uh, a robin would not prefer that mating display. And so a robin would never mate with a peacock because they do not prefer that behavior. So they are isolated because they do not prefer that behavior that's being displayed by the males. So that is it for our um, speciation notes for notebook pages 110 and 111. If you have any questions um, or concerns about um, the different mechanisms of speciation or the different types of evolution or how evolution occurs, convergent, divergent, coevolution, please be sure to let me know. Thanks.